So radicals have their own properties, um, which are very similar to those for exponents. Uh, so for example, if I've got uh, two uh, radicals that are um, multiplying each other, I can combine those into a single radical um, uh, with the product of those two numbers. So the square root of a times the square root of b becomes the square root of a times b, or if it was the cube root of a times the cube root of b, it would be the cube root of a times b. Uh, the key is it has to be the same root for us to be able to combine them. I can't have two different roots in that circumstance. Um, in the case of fractions, uh, if I'm dividing um, two radicals, well, I can combine those underneath a single uh, square root symbol or cube root symbol or whatever it is. Again, it's got to be the same root for both the numerator and denominator. And then if I'm taking the root of a root, uh, we can think of it as similar to raising a power to a power with exponents. So in that case, I can rewrite it as just a single root uh, with the product of those two. So if I'm taking the square root of the cube root of something, I can just rewrite that as the sixth root of whatever that number is. So again, in, uh, just like with our exponents, when I raise a power to a power, the base doesn't change, just the exponent does. The same thing is true here. The number underneath the root symbol doesn't change, just the root itself changes. So our rules for when we are uh, trying to simplify expressions involving radicals uh, are listed here. Um, number one, uh, we want to leave no perfect squares or perfect cubes or whatever root we're operating with underneath the radical. So that's number one. Is we want to get everything out from underneath the radical symbol that we can. Uh, number two, um, if we have a fraction uh, problem, we're, uh, we are not allowed to have any roots, any radicals in the denominator. So we've got to uh, rationalize, it's called our denominators. We can't leave a square root, can't leave a cube root, anything like that in the denominator. And then the last one is the trickiest piece. It doesn't come up too often, but we'll see it in an example or two um, where the index of the root needs to be reduced. And so this really kind of connects uh, um, roots and exponents and trying to simplify what that uh, fractional exponent will be so that the root will be the smallest that it can be. If that's confusing for now, hopefully with an example it'll become clear. So in this first example, we've got two square roots that are multiplying each other. So the first thing we're going to do is combine this into just a single square root symbol, and then we're going to seek to try to see where we can pull things out from underneath the square root symbol, develop some rules for that. So I'm going to combine this one giant square root. I'm not going to multiply the 10 times 30 because then I'm just going to have to factor tree that larger number back down again. So I'm just going to leave it as 10 times 30. But I am going to combine the exponents on the x's and y's uh, to gather those up to work with those. So I've got x squared times x to the first gives me x to the third. And then I've got y to the first times y to the third gives me y to the fourth. So I've got now everything underneath one square root symbol. So I'm going to work on the numbers first. And again, I'm looking for either pairs, uh, uh, perfect squares, or I'm looking for pairs of numbers. So if I factor tree that 30 down, I could break it into uh, 5 times 6, just like I could have broken up the 10 into 5 times 2. Um, but I'm going to break it up into 10 times 3. And the reason I'm going to do that, I'm trying to think ahead here to try to minimize the amount of work that I have to do. And so I've got a pair of 10s. And so when I have a pair of numbers underneath the square root symbol, that means I can take it out as a single 10. And so now I've got that 10 out but this three is still gonna be trapped underneath the square root symbol. So I'm gonna leave that there. There's no way that I can get that three out from underneath the square root symbol. Now for the variables. Maybe easier for us to see just that x to the third, let's write it out as x times x times x. And so just like with numbers, I'm gonna pull out uh, variables in pairs as well. So I've got one pair of x's, just like I had a pair of 10's, came out as a single 10 outside the squared symbol. I've got one pair of x's that's going to come out as a single x outside the squared symbol. And then just like I had a 3 that was left over here that didn't pair up and didn't have a uh, match, likewise this x is stuck underneath the square root symbol. In the case of the y's, I've got y to the fourth, so if I go y times y times y times y, 
Well, this time I've got a pair of Y's going to come out as a Y. I have another pair of Y's going to come out as a Y. And so therefore I'm going to have Y squared uh, on the outside with no Y's left over on the inside. And what we can do is as a rule to kind of, instead of having to write things out this kind of longhand format, what we can do is we can divide the exponent on any variables by whatever the root is. So in this case, if I've got a three here underneath the square root symbol, I take three divided by two, it goes in, two goes into that one time. So I have my single X on the outside with one left over. So that's why I still have an X left over. In the case of Y to the fourth, I've got y or four divided by two is two. It goes in evenly two times. So I have y squared on the outside with no y left over. And so this then is as simplified an expression as we can end up with. In the next example, we have a very similar idea, except now it's a couple of cube roots instead of a couple of square roots. So now we're going to combine these underneath one giant cube root symbol. But uh, now we're not going to be looking for pairs of numbers or perfect squares as we try to pull numbers out. We're going to be looking for triples or perfect cubes. So once more, I'm not going to multiply together the numbers. I'm going to leave those as they are. But I am going to combine together the exponents on the a. So I've got a to the fourth times a to the second combines to make a to the sixth. So I'm going to proceed to factor tree uh, 72 and 81. And again, I want to try to use a little uh, strategy, as they say, to try to uh, make this as quick a process as possible. So I could just divide 72 by 2 and break it down into 2 times 36. But that 36 doesn't help me. It's not, I'm not looking for square roots. I'm looking for cubes. I'm looking for 3 of something. And so if I kind of think ahead here, I know that 81 can break up into 9 times 9. And then I look at 72 and I think I can break it up as 8 times 9. And so now I have a set of three nines that can come out from underneath the cube root symbol as a single 9. And then likewise, hopefully I recognize that's an 8 there, that 8 is a perfect cube as well, just on its own. So the cube root of 8 is 2. So I'm going to be able to get a 2 out from underneath the uh, cube root symbol as well. Um, I could have factor treated that 8 down into 2 times 2 times 2. I'd see three twos, and that would come out as a single 2. So again, using a little uh, um, kind of thinking ahead a little bit on those numbers can simplify the process of uh, simplifying the expression. And then I'm going to use that kind of division rule uh, with the exponent on the a. Except this time I'm not going to divide that exponent by 2 because I'm not operating with a square root question. It's a cube root question, so I'm going to take that 6 and divide it by 3. So 3 goes into 6 twice. It goes in evenly. So that means I'm going to have an a squared on the outside. And so in this case, I'm left with nothing underneath the uh, cube root symbol. So I just need to clean up that 9 times 2, and we get 18a squared as our simplified expression. In the next one, we have the uh, cube root of the square root of 128. So uh, we saw this rule on the previous slide where I'm going to be able to rewrite this as a single root. So it's still going to be 128 underneath that root symbol. But I need to multiply the two uh, roots. So I've got a cube root. Remember, this is a square root here. So 3 times 2 means it's whoops the sixth root of 128. And so now I can go ahead and work on trying to factor tree down that 128. And so maybe the simplest thing would just be to divide by 2. So 2 times 64. Now I can break that 64 into perhaps 8 and 8. Now that pair of 8s doesn't do me any good because I need 6 of something. But hopefully we do recognize that with the 8s I've got a set of three twos in each of these. So two times two times two makes eight. Another two times two times two makes eight plus the two that I have right here. So now I have a set of seven twos underneath this sixth root symbol. So I can take out a group of six of them as a single two outside of the radical. And then I still have this one left over. So it's going to be two times the 
sixth root of 2 is my result.